Herm Duels, and today I'm doing an update video of my Bujins. I saw them um, get kind of a top recently. I don't know if it was a complete top, but I saw them get popular for a second, for a quick second, and then I haven't seen any more about them, so I figured I'd do an update of mine. Um, I did update mine a little bit and do a couple of interesting things with the deck, but I hope you guys enjoyed it, and let's get in on into it. So, first off, if you're looking for a Protect the King deck, you're going to want to play three copies of Bujin Yamato. Always play three copies of Yamato. Um, he, his effect is that once per turn, during your end phase, you can add one Bujin monster from your deck to your hand, then you can send one Bujin monster or send one card from your hand to the graveyard. So pretty neat card. Um, you're always going to want to get him on the field, and with playing um, three copies of Fire Formation Tenki in this 60 card deck, you're essentially playing, or not 60 card deck, 40 card deck, you're essentially playing six copies of Yamato, so you're going to pretty much open him in your first hand. Um, then I play two copies of Bujin Mikazuchi. Um, Mikazuchi, um, he combos very well with Yamato. His effect is, is that when a Bujin monster is, um, you control the sword by battle or by card effect and send to the graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, so kind of all of them have a special summon effect except for Yamato. His um, second effect is when he's on the field is once per turn during your end phase of a Bujin monster is banished from your graveyard, you can add one um, spell or trap card that's a Bujin spell or trap card, but you only play Bujin Carnation in this deck, so you're pretty much only limited to get a Bujin Carnation. Then I play one copy of Bujin Arasuda. Uh, Arasuda's alright. I think he's probably the least useful out of the four main Beast Warrior Bujins for now. There's going to be a fifth one soon. Um, if he's on your field, if a Bujin monster is in your graveyard, or excuse me, if a Bujin monster in your graveyard or face up on your side of the field is banished, uh, you can special summon him, so that's how you get him out. And then... Uh, once per turn during your end phase of a Bujin monster is added from your deck to your hand, which combos again with Yamato, you can draw one card or discard one card and draw one card. Or I think it's vice versa. Draw one card, then discard one card. So they all do kind of combo off of one another, the uh, Beast Warrior ones. And then the final one I'm playing is I'm playing two copies of Bujin Harume. The reason I play two Harume is because it lets me instantly go into a Susano if I already have something in Grave and I want to normal summon a card, a one of these other Bujin Beast Warriors. So its effect is that it can't be normal summoned or set, um, but you can banish a Bujin card from your graveyard to special summon it. But it can you can only control one Bujin Harume, so that you can't double summon to get a Susano out. You have to no special summon just one of these. But with the likelihood of 40 cards, you're probably only going to get one in a time. And the 2000 Beat Stick is very nice. Um, if it's destroyed by battle or by card effects, however, you can discard one card to make your opponent discard one card also. But you, I'm not going to use that that often unless I have something like a turtle or a hare in my hand that I want to get rid of, or a senyo. So it doesn't come in that handy. But the 2000 beater in the instant summon is very nice in this deck. So, to Harume. Uh, that's it for the main Bujins. Um... But then I get into the other little Bujins, the animal Bujins, and that is um, to copy a turtle because it makes it so your Bujin monsters cannot be targeted. Um, you can banish it to make your Bujins not be able to be targeted. Then I, one of your Bujins, and then I play two copies of Bujin hair. You can banish it to make it so your Bujins, again, cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects for the rest of the turn, one of your Bujins. Um, then I play two copies of Bujin Quillant. Um, you can banish this card from your graveyard to target one card on your opponent's side of the field and destroy it. So it's on either player's turn that these effects can activate between Hare, Turtle, and Quillant. So really awesome. I usually send a Quillant very quickly to graveyard because in case I want to pop my opponent's Pendulum Scales, that's why I bumped it up to two instead of just one in the deck. I was playing just one when BA and uh, Shadows were out, because popping stuff was not very good, but now when you can pop a Pendulum Scale to completely stop them, like if they waste Wavering Eyes, and they pop their stuff, and then they lay the two Pendulum Scales down, they don't have much left in their hand, you can go ahead and Quillen if they're playing bad, and they forget that this is in the grave. That's the lovely thing about Bujins, is people forget what's in your grave a lot. 
Then for the pretty much attack uh, side of it, that's the defensive side of it and the popping side of it. For the attack side of the Bujins, I play um, three Crane. Uh, your opponent is never going to want to attack you when you're playing Bujins, ever. Because you play three Crane in your deck, um, during either player's damage calculation, if a Beast Warrior monster, Bujin type monster, is involved in battle you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to double your monster's attack so unless they're very sure that you only have one crane in your hand and they have something with at least uh 3600 on their board to 4000 they're not going to want to attack you that's why i don't play any battle traps in this deck is because i play like six copies of honest essentially um then i play one copy of senyo which is another battle monster. <laughs> it's amazing. I play, really, I play like um, six copies of Honest in this deck, for real. Um, during either player's turn, if this card is in your graveyard and a Bujin monster that's a Beast Warrior is involved in a battle, then you can banish it to make that monster gain attack equal to the monster that's battling. So, kind of crazy playing this too. Uh, I was considering playing it at two, but I think with three Crane and two Honest, you just don't need it. With the amount of light monsters that I play in this deck, too honest is essential. I've been thinking about busting out my ultra rare ones, but I haven't really got into competitive play with Bujins again yet. So I'm considering taking it to locals, but I haven't really thought about it yet. Um, but during either player's turn, if a light monster is involved in battle, you can discard this card to make your make the, your light monster gain attack equal to the monster that's battling. So pretty broken. But anyways, guys, that is for the main deck. Let's get into the, well, not the main deck, the main monsters. Let's get into the spells. Because you do banish a lot, I play one burial from a different dimension. It's kind of nice when you banish your hairs and your quillins and your senyo. Um, it, it helps. Uh, then I play two copies of Bujin Carnation. Uh, you can target a Bujin monster in your graveyard and target a Bujin... A monster that's banished and special summon them both and then immediately xyz summon a card that's either a beast beast or your wing beast which is the majority of what you play in this deck anyways for the extra deck so that doesn't really hurt me usually i go this later in the game and make a sue snow so two carnation then I play two copies of Pot of Duality. I've considered bumping it up to three but since you don't special summon a whole hell of a lot I play two. Um, if I can get a Yamato out and a Kaiser Coliseum, which makes it so my opponent can only play one monster. Usually, I'm not afraid to activate Pot of Duality. So I'm considering bumping up Kaiser Coliseum to three, but I don't want it to get too cloggy. But at the same time, I kind of want to bump Duality up to two or three. I mean, so that's um, that's what I'm playing with those. So I'm really considering bumping this up to three. Then I'm playing two copies of MST. If you do want to play uh, Twin Twister on top of this, I don't really blame you at all because you can discard your Bujin monsters, but for now, I'm just playing MST in here to test until I go to like a Locals or something. But yeah, I'm playing two MSTs in here. But if you want to play more or Twin Twister, go for it. Then I play three copies of Tinky because the majority of the stuff in this deck is Beast Warrior and you want to get out your Yamato from your hand or to your hand as fast as possible because your Yamato is going to be your king of the castle. Because this deck is a very protect the king deck, kind of like Evil Swarms, you want to get Yamato. So you're playing six Yamatos with this and you're playing duality so you can get to Yamato even faster or this. So three copies of Tinky. For the traps, I'm playing one copy of Bottomless because sometimes you just don't like what your opponent's playing. One copy of Torrential because, again, you just sometimes don't like your opponent's swarm. One copy of Solemn Warning because you just need to stop special summons. One copy of Vanity's Emptiness because with Yamato on board, I again, I don't special summon, so why the hell do I care? Even if it's just for a turn. Then I play Double Breakthrough Skill. I've considered dropping this for Solemn Strike, but I don't have Solemn Strike. So if you do have Solemn Strikes, feel free to drop Breakthrough Skill for your Solemn Strikes. But with two lose one turn, I just don't feel like I really super need it. So I haven't gone out of my way to get them. Um, if your opponent special summons a monster or you special summon a monster, during the turn that monster is special summons, you have to switch it to defense position and negate its effect. So with this deck not special summoning a whole hell of a lot with Yamato, again... It doesn't really affect me, so I play two lose one turn. I think it's kind of a staple in Bujin decks now to play lose one turn. But that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So first off, I know what you guys are going to give me shit about it, but I play three Platinum Rare 
Susan O's. I love my Platinum Rares. I think they're sparkly as hell and they're a distraction for my opponent. That they are like, oh my god, why is that so damn sparkly? And then they forget what's in my graveyard. So it's a psychological tactic for me to play three Platinum Susan O's. I don't know if it works, but hey, worth a shot. Um, and I don't have Ultras, and I bought all those Megatons, so why the hell not? Um, this card can attack all opponent's monsters, and with 2400 attack, there's not much that's going to stop it. I mean, you can... But normal monsters that your opponent's just going to normal summon, it's not going to stop. And with Tinky boosting its attack points and Crane and Sinyo and um, Honest, you're you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay just sitting on a Susano. Um, its effect is, is all, its second effect is that you can detach a card from it to either add a Bujin or send a Bujin monster from your deck to the graveyard. And but you can only you can only control one Susano. And then I don't play this that often, but I'm playing it just in case. I'm playing one copy of Kakasucha. Um, I think I'll probably mispronounce the shit out of that, but hey, whatever. Um, I'm playing one copy because it does send five cards from the top of my deck to the graveyard, and it protects my other Bujin monsters, so it can come in handy. But I just don't find myself using it that often, so it's here if I need it, but I don't use it. Then I play one copy of Sukiyomi. Sukiyomi really helps um, if I'm getting like low amount of hand. I can detach a card from it once per turn to send my entire hand of graveyard. Sorry, my camera shifted. My uh, I can send one card to the graveyard to from my hand, minimum one, send my entire hand to the grave. And if I send my entire hand to the grave, I get to draw two cards. So that's the main effect that he has. So that's why I play one of him. Then I play one copy of Amaterasu. It does come in handy, but I don't find myself using it all that much because of the commitment of making it with three Bujins. Then I play one copy of Dark Rebellion because sometimes I just don't have Honest or Senyo or anything else and I just need to quickly beat over something so I do play one copy. I play one Ragn Zero just in case again I need to beat over something or I Tinky by accident and I'm increasing my opponent's attack monster so I pop their shit with it. I play one Tiger King because I do play a bunch of Tinkies. I play one Honor Arc in case I need to steal my opponent's shit. I play one Castell in case I need to bounce my opponent's stuff. I play one Diamond Dire because I might need to pop some scales. And with the Beast Warrior and Beasts and Wing Beasts, I don't actually have to pop Diamond Dire, which is pretty cool. Then just because I pulled one, I'm playing Giant Hand. Just because. Why not? Then I play number 82 because I do play Kaiser Coliseum and I can swing at my opponent's life once directly. If I play Kaiser Coliseum plus this, my opponent can't attack me, and I can swing at your life points directly repeatedly. And then I play one Abyss Dweller, just in case I'm playing against something like BA or something like that. But that's it for everything, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed this profile. It is my complete Bujin deck. Um, like I said, for the suggestions, you can play Solemn Strike and stuff like that if you want to. I chose not to because it's more of a budget deck than anything. I know I say that with a giant hand in the extra deck, but it's a gold rare one, so whatever. But I hope you enjoyed it. But this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to join Dark Armed Alliance, and I'm out.